Good morning, guys. Um, so I'm a little bit of reminded uh, from my last cash, uh, Casual Connect session in Kiev back in October last year. Um, when I went into the hall in the morning, um, because of it was like first session in the morning on the Friday, which has been the third day of Casual Connect, nobody was there. <laughs> so I've been just at time. Uh, and nobody else was there. Uh, the reason is everybody was partying and I, I already thought that the guy with the camera in the background is transferring or like transmitting it up to the rooms in the hotel so the people sitting in the back and watching the sessions, which actually would be a great idea at Casual Connect, I think. And then we waited for like 20 minutes and the room was packed. So today, congratulations, we made it in only 10 minutes over from the keynote. I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> so um, I'm here to talk about Flash, obviously. obviously. And, um, I will know. I will. I will frequently make use of QR codes during my session. So if you have like a barcode scanner on your phone, you might just go ahead with that and follow me on Twitter with that QR code. And I uh, will have some others during the presentation. And um, before I begin, just, uh, just a quick question: How many of you are actually developers? Okay. How many of you are like publishers, business people? Okay. So you're sitting in the back of the room. Why is that? <laughs> you don't merge? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Right. So, Flash, for the people of you that haven't noticed, is the console of the web. And um, I want to talk a little bit about why is that today. And since there are so many developers in the room, I will, that's the good news, <coughs> uh, rush through this part. Okay? So, because the coding stuff is coming in the end. Um, for over like 15 years, um, as you know, we are doing uh, with Flash what browsers are simply not capable to do. And um, personally, I do not see anything comparable to the actual uh, 3D accelerated power available in the, in the plugin-free browser very soon. So um, when we're talking about Flash, we're talking about consistency. So whatever you publish is like consistency across devices. And this is another big, big, uh, thing you want to look into. So um, before, there has been no way to really reach such a massive number of people with uh, such a consistency. And um, right now, as I just said, um, I don't see any other way to achieve that. So when you're building your game, it's all about the building blocks. And um, when we guys at Adobe think about the building blocks to provide you guys with as designers and developers, uh, we are always looking at the big picture. So our graphic team, the VM team, the people taking care about uh, the different products um, sit together and nail down what's needed to give you the tools to create seamless experiences across possibly all relevant devices out there, and that out of a single toolbox. So when you guys are looking at the technology, especially developers, you might just be looking at the parts. But when it comes to Flash, the sum is always better than the parts. Because if you put all the blocks together, you realize, oh, I not only got GPU acceleration, GPU acceleration, it will all be about GPU acceleration today. Um, you also got things like a nice workflow and a solid app action script language um, you can make use of and like monitorize um, your doings. And um, you got like input technologies that make the platform solid and consistent, just as a console. Um, I don't know, some numbers, huh? Numbers first. Um, if you look at these numbers, that's pretty amazing. 70% of the browser games are Flash-based. You guys are producing 70% of the Flash-based browser games. Nine out of 10 of the top Facebook games are Flash-based. The best-selling iOS games are Flash-based. We'll look at some of them later on. The top games from companies like EA and Zynga are Flash-based. And um, I don't know if you know, but Angry Birds, based on Flash, is coming to Facebook very soon. So if you guys didn't realize the potential of a Flash-based game until today, um, here's what to tell your customer, your boss, or anybody looking for a technology that simply has yeah, a much smaller market share compared to what Flash offers you. We do bring your game to an audience that is 11 times greater than the best-selling consoles worldwide. This is huge. 
And with flash combined with air, our technology to, yeah, to go multi-platform with a single source, uh, this number would be even greater. So my question to you this morning, <laughs> which I better read out because it's hard to read over there. Can a single game reach over 1.3 billion people? This is the answer. Want to read it out loud, huh? So with that, we're not talking about tomorrow. And we're definitely not talking about 15 frames per second or something like that. And we're not talking about like a light version for the web or stuff like that. We're talking about AAA gaming content in the browser or on mobile devices, regardless if it's 2D or 3D content. And I'm talking of today. If we're looking at where we're coming from, oh, AutoSync. Actually, this video matrix is always pushing the picture to the left, so thanks. Um, with, with Flash, as you know, you definitely cannot only do stunning games, you can do much more. I mean, when we're looking at Jupyter Acceleration uh, and uh, the reality we currently face, like pushing pixels on the screen through software is not an option anymore. Uh, the given increased size of the screens and the pixel density, um, the CPUs are just limited. So that's why the GPU, of course, presents a viable solution for the future. And um, see what things were a few months ago. This is just like the end of 2010, when we began to look at um, GPU optimization and flash. And we did all that stuff CPU-based. And uh, the chart on the left is like gigaflops numbers that were able, or you were able to, 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 to leverage with that. And, um, I'll do that and show you where we are today. And today, again, is the keyword because this is available today. You can use it, and a lot of the people are already using it. And um, to, 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 to fire it up a little bit more, uh, I want to run you guys through a quick video. Um, some of you might know this video, so don't get too bored. I also have many more new stuff, but I think it's just too amazing. Let's uh, give the stage to Tim Sweeney. He's like from Epic Games, and I'm pretty sure you know that guy. Check that out. It's pretty amazing. Unreal Engine 3 is a million lines of C++ code, and we're now taking advantage of Adobe's compiler technology to compile this code to run securely within Flash. Now, Flash provides a modern shader-based graphics <coughs> library comparable to OpenGL that enables us to access the full hardware-accelerated power of a modern PC. So overall, the performance is high, and the code is compatible across browser and with all of the major platforms. So that's really amazing. But I think that probably a lot of you out in the audience think this might be a video and not a real game. So Josh, why don't you play a little bit? <laughs> How do you like that? It's Unreal in the browser. I think that's awesome. And when it is available? Right now. Um, these guys just so showed off that, uh, that uh, thing, that recording has been from October last year from our Max uh, developer meeting in LA, California where this guy actually is coming from. Just flew in yesterday or the day before. <laughs> um, so let me put it to one simple sentence, and that is what I would like you guys to carry away for today. Flash Player 11 en enables full hardware accelerated graphics for more people than any other web technology, period. So how do you achieve that? We're looking on the architectural view of that. Um, it's, it's just simple. Um, choose from an artery of already existing frameworks, like uh, on the 2D or on the 3D sites, and this is just uh, 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 like uh, a fraction of that, uh, what is available on the market. Build your action script uh, knowledge on top of that, and let stage 3D do the rest. It can be that simple. I mean, you could do. GPU acceleration or GPU accelerator 2D, uh, to be precise, like that. 
that's a valid way to do stuff. And keep that slide in your head and check that out. It's just doing the same. And if you did realize, this slide is showing 30% comments. Okay? So that slide has got no comments at all. <laughs> so it's really an easy thing to do. That's uh, made using, or that's just an example um, uh, of how to do stuff with the stalling framework. I used a little picture down here. It's uh, uh, the little birdie coming from the egg on the iOS devices. Um, this is because um, stalling refers to Sparrow. Um, you guys in the audience that did the little iOS programming might have used Sparrow. Stalling is just the same as Sparrow. Um, it's also from the same developer. Uh, it's just the same thing for Flash. So, and again, if you get your barcode scanner, go to stallingframework.org and check out some more. So, um, enough talking. Let me show you some stuff and uh, let, me know you, uh, let me show you the latest stuff I got, regards, in regards of some uh, demos. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, um, uh, I hope you guys can see that. Um, this Black Sun, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a tech demo, so it's a project still in development. Um, a lot more is, is still to come from all that. I mean, I'll jump, jump in it, and because of some German-specific laws, I'm not really allowed to show you everything of that level because they are just showing swastikas in that game. So I need to run around a little bit and make sure that I don't have anything that might be offensive to anybody. Um, the description why they are using uh, like Nazi zombies <laughs> that's to be found on their web page is they said because we ran out of communist aliens. Um, so what I want to show you is just like they are using a flash, the current flash engine and I really cannot play that because there are no enemies coming but it's just the first imagination for that. I hope um, you get a you get the trick. Um, they are using <coughs> or doing that 3D rendering uh, with HDR Bloom. Um, they are using static and dynamic lightning. If I throw one of these uh, grenades, no more left or what? Oh, damn it! Uh, no grenades left. Sorry. Um, it's just throwing like like a light thing where the zombies uh, that are supposed to come die. Um, they are uh, uh, doing massive physics calculations with collision detection, de de detection and uh, they're doing ray casting, and you should follow that project and just check out what's coming because um, I'm running that thing on a crappy one and a half year old Mac MacBook Pro with the GeForce 330, I think, and it's pretty amazing. Um, so they use, they're using the Minko 3D framework, which is just one of the examples I showed you. Um, uh, whatever. Uh, that's it for the desktop for now. Let's check out some mobile stuff. So you guys might be interested in that. Um, lip. Good morning, iPad. Yeah. There we go. So um, what would you guys expect from Flash running on iOS regarding frame rates? Low? OK, honest guy, huh? <laughs> I want to give him a round of applause <laughs> and just Prove it other way around. Let me show you um, Flash running on iOS using Air 3.2, which is currently in beta 4. You can check it out. You can download it from labs.adobe.com. Uh, and using Flash Player 11.2 technology. Introducing 60 frames per second. It's really got a bad sound, but I want you guys to focus on the stuff that's flying around there, massive particles, explosions, everything. And check the top left, there's a frame counter. Okay. Ah, you need to get up some more enemies yet. How do you like that? Okay? Fast? Questions allowed, anytime. Yeah, you should use the microphone yeah. for recording everything. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Mm -hmm. Working. 
Okay, yes? Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, the problem I encountered when working with Flash and then uh, frame it uh, were really, I, I was uh, trying a bit uh, using uh, Flash on uh, and creating an uh, iPhone application. I did it about uh, a year, year and a half ago, so probably the not most up to date uh, That's the point. application and everything. But uh, the thing we tried and uh, we had problems, like creating an, an, a, a person or something that has a connection of arms and everything, mm -hmm. and doing animation of rotation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like for, for example, running figure or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this, this was the case when we had the most problem. You would see it uh, running on the on PC and it was running perfect. And uh, when we try it on device, yeah. the yeah, frame sure. just dropped. But the important part in, in your question was you did that one or one and a half years ago. Yeah, probably. So sure. You remember that graphic I showed you mm -hmm. <laughs> where we did everything with the CPU? Look into yeah. these iOS devices. They are not capable of, doing, of, of offering you many so or a lot of performance so using the uh, CPU. The situation is today, if, if I try today run the same thing on iPhone and stuff like that, if you, if, you, if you would try to run just the same thing that you have from, from, from back these days, it might not be at an optimum, uh, optima, optimum of performance because you are not empowering any of the staged 3D sting, things. You still need to build that into your code. It's really easy. It's some lines of code. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to invoke it, of course, because else it will use CPU rendering and it will just be crappy, you know. Okay. But that is because CPU rendering is crappy. That's just easy, you know. Um, you, you need some modifications, and that's what, what I would like you guys to, 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 all, to all to do when you, when, you, when you go out of that room, go back to work, just try out and check your code. Also against the new version of Flash Player 11.2, which is coming pretty soon. Um, and uh, uh, look into these frameworks, look into Stage 3D, and look how you can optimize your stuff. Because the, 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 um, the number of times we improved performance, especially on, on iOS, without GPU acceleration, so just the Air framework is already, has once been by four times, and then again by 50%. So uh, in that mentioned one and a half years time frame, really a lot of improvements happened. So just recheck. That's, so we're talking about today, not about one and a half years ago. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's if, important if I'm uh, like now working with the 5.5 mm -hmm. uh, ID, and uh, so it will probably, just by doing that, it will work much better than when I used to work with CS5. Uh, actually, actually, you of course need uh, the SDKs, so you mm -hmm. need to download uh, the current Air stuff and whatever. So 5.5 5. 5 out of the box will bring you, uh, I think it will target Flash Player 10 something. Mm -hmm. And so not 11, which is, which is the current one. And we'll target like Air 2.7. And we are at Air 3.2 beta right now. So you, you definitely want to update your SDK. So the best thing is, is to try and work with the, all the latest stuff. And the right, 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 right. Just okay. go to labs.adobe.com uh, and pull down the beta stuff. It's really, it's called beta, but it's, it isn't that beta. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, yeah, pleasure. So, um, that's for the 60 or 61 frames per second. Um, I want to show you a blitting example because um, what we are doing here is like um, uh, we are placing a lot of, excuse me, please, um, a lot of uh, flash movie clips on the stage. And um, this is really like an awkward demo. It's like a tech demo. Uh, we want to try to max out this iPad 2 I have uh, down here. Look at the top left. I hope you can see the frame count. I'll try to, no, it's not allowing me to. Is it, is it visible? Uh, can somebody read it and for like, like maybe lead the guys that cannot see the number? Like currently it's running at 61 of 60 frames. That's our benchmark. That's our target here. So uh, what I will do is um, I will just move these guys around so they are animated. Um, and as you can see, uh, we are still at 61 frames per second. So to the lower left in the, in the light blue text, I'll show it to you. You can see at the moment we are running 500 blitted images. Um, let's bring that number up and see with 1,000. We are still at 61 frames. 1,500, still 61. I'll make that a little bit faster. And we had 3,000 blitted images moving across one screen. That's really a lot. Imagine angry, angry Birds with 3,000 pigs flying around the screen. That's much. I'm going to 3,5. I'm going to 4,000. What do you think when we'll stop? When will it begin to go down? 4,500 blitted images on the screen in 
case of music movie clips on the stage. At 5,000, we have seen the first little dip. At 5,500, it's still 60. 6,000, we are at 58 frames. So a lot of developers in the room. Do you think you can top 6,000 6, vivid images in your game? Okay, so there's a lot of headroom to go. I'll just crack it up so you see the frame rate goes down when you, so when we are at 9,000, we are at 40 frames. 9,5, we are at 39 frames. At 10,000, we are still at 37 frames per second. Okay, so I crank it crank down this iPad. So this is 30 frames per second. This is like really great and it's still 13. It's already 13,000 movie clips jumping around that screen. So yeah, that's just um, to quickly show you what uh, I'm talking about when I'm talking about today. So go for it. Do something with it. Produce ga great games and let us know. We want to know what you achieve with that. Um, to show you some of the stuff that is already available in the iOS store or in the Android market or even at the Playbook store, um, this game is multi-platform running across all these um, stores and all these platforms. What are you laughing about? I just, I just, I just wondered. <laughs> because, whatever. i just do a quick practice mission. It's Age of Defenders, the game uh, there was... Um, That is that is loading a bit slowly, but be that soon. So, mm -hmm. yeah, classic tower defense strategy game. I have to survive my, uh, to to defend my base against enemies. So I set up uh, little turrets, hopefully shooting at them. Don't care too much about my strategy, but some guys will come in and, oh yeah, completely at the wrong spot. Whatever. You get the idea. So it's nice and responsive. As you can see, uh, we get like uh, all of them running in there. So we got some particles flying around. Definitely with the, with the current technology, we could do much more because this is like built on Air 3. This game is like four months old or five months old. So I just want to show you a living example. So if, if we put it in like uh, 10 minutes more, we would have a lot more enemies, but let's skip that. And check out another one. Um, I think a pretty popular example. Um, and I'm pretty sure many of you guys know Machinarium, right? Wait, can you show which iPad this is? Or it's iPad 2. Uh, is it Google device i11? On iPad 1, it's slower. So it's just like with the PC. Uh, if I'm using my old PC 10 years ago, it will be slower. <laughs> it's just the same thing. So, um, Machinarium is like, it's like the success story as it can be. This game is like the number one app in 13 countries. Um, it's the number one paid app on iPad 2. Uh, it has been the game of the week, and um, I don't know uh, how a success story looks, but you know these guys just used flash and air technology, how it's meant, because this this game is available for already three or four years in a, as a browser game. So they just used their existent code and their existent Swifts. It's 23 or 28 Swifts running this game. It's one gigabyte of content. So it's really a big thing. And they used, um, they used Air to package that up as a multi-platform application and threw it out to the iTunes store. And I'm pretty sure these guys are millionaires with what they achieved, at least in their local language. They're coming from the Czech, Czech, Czech so maybe, I don't know, <laughs> it's the currency difference there. But it's like, it's, it's, it's a top seller. It's a cute game. Um, you're basically uh, running around with a little robot and uh, doing stuff like controlling levers and whatever and trying to find your uh, robot girlfriend and um, try to find out the scenario. It's just cute. 
this actually is a bad example for stage 3D because it's not using any of the GPU acceleration. But when you look at um, at a lot of the casual games or a lot of the in the uh, in the kids market, you won't have like f flying around 3D objects or explosions or particles or whatever. Um, it's more like a slideshow. It's picture stuff. You're moving around, and as you guys know, that's um, uh, something you can really, really, really do very well with uh, Flash uh, already without stage 3D. So why just not use it and go for that? Um, I just want to show you um, some of the, oh, well, let's just jump back and do that a little bit later. Um, all right. Sync, power. I need to fetch a new VGA matrix. It's always bugging me with like, thank you. Oh no, it jumps again. <laughs> Just do it once more. We'll be fine. Should be fine. A lot of stuff, not going the way I would like it to be this morning. I don't know why. Yeah, <clears throat> there we are. So that's what I just talked about. Um, Use Air, our, uh, um, our, our wrapper technology to, 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 to wrap your code, put your app inside and whatever you need for that, and like generate an IPA or an APK um, disk image or an executable file for Windows and target multiple platforms. That's definitely something you want to look into um, because why um, create the same content for different platforms multiple times? It's just no reason to do that. And um, the uh, captive runtime is also a new um, uh, aspect. Now you can put the runtime itself, you can package it up with your app. Before, um, if you look to the, to, for instance, to the Android market or on desktop um, um, uh, devices, you had to install Air separately of your application. So you needed the runtime to power your application and um, the application itself came as a separate thing. So now um, since Air 3, Oh, three, three or three dot one. Um, you can uh, leverage the Air Captive runtime, um, which is just packaging up the runtime with the app. So that's what we are basically doing uh, with a Flash-based app on iOS since day one. And now um, you have the option to do that on uh, on all your projects. You still can go without the runtime, which makes sense basically for business applications that are like deployed into a business. Um, corporate network and you will manage or want to manage the runtime uh, separately from your applications. But yeah, you got the choice. That's the message. So another new feature for Air are native extensions for Air. And um, especially when you're going multi-platform, native extensions um, offer you a way to do stuff that you cannot do from without like 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 a like a like a runtime that is targeting multiple platforms. So as always, when you're using um, um, a framework like that, um, you'll find certain limitations that don't really compete with the native uh, capabilities. So for instance, on iOS, if you want to really reach into the address book and like modify contacts or whatever, or you want to generate just a SMS. Uh, with more than the empty SMS showing up. You want to set the content and whatever, so you want to go out of the sandbox of your application. Um, you would need a native functionality, and that's where native extensions come in. <coughs> native extensions uh, can be written in, in uh, any of the listed languages. It can be native C, uh, C++, Objective-C, or Java. And you'll basically generate a plugin that you um, package up with your application uh, to do the bridge to the native functionality. And there are um, a certain uh, number of use cases for that. So um, you might uh, want to access a gyroscope or just fire up the vibration capability of a device. 
Um, you might want to access licensing or payment, just the examples I showed up over there, or like add APIs, like add mob or whatever. Um, you want to access local or push notifications, or just maybe you want to reuse some legacy code that you already have. Uh, existing native C code, like a physics engine, that is, that is there, that is available, that is really mature, and you don't want to step away from it. So you just package it up into a native extension, and you have raw, raw processing power, and really easy building blocks to your action script code. Um, image or video filters or other examples, or like statistics or simulations. You might run, uh, uh, run stuff like that. And there's a growing public library um, of, of ANEs, of Air Native extensions. And the new stuff, I just wrote it down. Um, and the new stuff I just uh, saw is an in-app purchase uh, um, it, uh, extension for iOS. There's an in-app billing um, extension for Android that just came out. There's even a new color tools extension. So if you're looking to target the Nuke, um, and you have uh, all, the, all the possibilities, native possibilities there. I add for iOS, I already mentioned add, add mob for Android, and the game center integration is something that is list, uh, just freshly come out. And the most amazing thing I've seen in this year, which is just one month old, is a guy uh, who built an Air Native extension for Kinect for the Microsoft controller, the guys that are coming next. And um, he connected uh, the Kinect interface with an Air application running on his desktop computer, where he had like a monster rendered, so he had himself like tracking uh, all the all the wrists, all the all the joints of himself jumping around, and the monster on, in the Air application was monster was jumping around rendering in stage 3D. So that's just a perfect example how to how to um, connect input devices like the Kinect with, with your application. So um, if we look at a code example. Um, it might be that simple to use a gyroscope in air on two platforms at the same time. So that's just, if I'm counting right, it's like, uh, whatever, six lines of code. So if you don't count the, <laughs> the last one as, as line seven. Um, that's really easy to do. And um, you could write your own native extensions, as I said, or you just use other's libraries, like a, like, like, like a SWIC. It's basically invo like invoking a SWIC. Um, you don't need to touch native code if, if you don't want to. And um, if you want to jump into that, there's another QR code for you guys. That's a really great article by my colleague Oliver Goldman um, about like a jump start with Air. So 15 minutes left. Um, and I want, no, just as a question. Um, that's, this, this is just an important buzzword I want to bring up because um, the scope of game development is just, you know, it's, it's going to a new, um, a, to a new horizon, which is brand gamification. And let me ask you a question. You guys know the example of Nissan, the stage Duke 3D car, the car configurator? Knowing? Yes? Raise hands. Okay, only a few. Have you seen the new Vodafone game, the net guys? Nobody? Okay. Let me, let me quickly show them to you. I got two other demos you might be interested as well. Whatever that is. So here we go with the net guys. Perfect example of brand, brand gamification because Vodafone just put out a game which is using Stage 3D API and I think they want to communicate that they have a really strong network. So um, let's check these guys. He's running around here, and wah, I didn't even make it to him. Uh, no, whatever. Example number one.
cannot read anything up there. Synchronization might be a feature. Here's the other one. So for the fraction of 70% of the people not knowing this example, I think that's just another great example of how to use your expertise in a completely new environment. Because um, if you looked at the car configurator a year ago and tried to configure your new, new car online, it would really be boring. But if you do that today, it's just like that. So you're really walking around the car, you got all the reflections. I don't know if you ever looked into what a, what, a, what a car company is doing when they produce a catalog. They use like nine colors on top of each other to reproduce the real color of the car with the metal, me, uh, metal effects in, inside and everything. Um, so they are really, really um, afraid of something might not be as the real car would be. So I can go here and check some new tires because uh, like these I can just get into the car and check out how is it is inside. Look around if whoop, look around. I said okay, we want to drive. You can also look around, but um, here comes the gaming part. Um, besides from just configuring your possible new car online, you're taking it for a test drive and. Um, this company is putting out prizes for the people that could uh, collect as many of these wow, blinking dots as possible and then not as good as driving as well. But in the end of that game, of course, um, you're offered like a real test drive. Okay? So that's bringing gaming technology in the world of advertisement and branding. And that's besides the gaming industry where the real budgets are. So just as an idea um, of how to use your expertise to go to new frontiers. So let's look at uh, what's next. Um, I already talked a lot about Flash Player 11.2 and Air 3.2 coming to your machines in the next, uh, in, the, in the early next. So uh, what is written early 2002 on this slide and uh, what is I think bringing one of the most requested uh, features to Flash is uh, the new mouse enhancements. So that's uh, also the reason why I brought a mouse, which I usually don't carry around with me. Um, we can jump into some examples if we still got time, or I show it to you offline later on because only 10 minutes left. Um, so just again, make sure to check out the currently available uh, Flash Play 11.2 from Labs and check out these features. Um, and um, check out what's coming next. I think um, more relevant for a number of you uh, would be uh, the next release cycle, um, where we target something what we call ActionScript workers. If you guys are into web workers, uh, this is a very interesting thing as well. Um, and Alchemy 2, of course, um, is a feature that is uh, uh, what people are looking for, for. And I don't know if you already um, looked into Monocle. Um, there are some sneak previews jumping around on YouTube. I'm not really allowed to show you something something with it like a little bit uh, crazy because it's on YouTube, but um, check out YouTube and check out Monocle. Basics, basically, it's about telemetry, about analyzing and optimizing your, um, your, your Flash content before you publish it and really tracking down and making sure that you get the optimum in performance. So uh, let's take a quick look at the mouse enhancements. That's uh, one uh, feature that I mentioned for Flash Player 11 or 2. Um, one important thing is mouse lock. So basically, now when you're running with the mouse pointer out of the game, out of the browser window, you're losing control of it. So with mouse, lo mouse lock, you can just lock the mouse to the game. Um, and you can use it, for example, a first-person shooter or whatever for looking around. And it's just, um, again, like some easy flags in ActionScript. Um, middle and right click. Um, as you guys know, left click, no problem. Right click, about Flash Player, whatever. <laughs> so um, that's um, a, feed, uh, uh, a problem of the past as well. Um, also um, in it is like um, middle and right click and whatever. And um, I, I could have, I could show you a really boring example with the white player where all these events are catched and whatever. And I think you can imagine that. So let's skip that. And um, I would have another one which I created with um, Alternativa 3D, uh, where it's like more like a first-person shooter running around, and I might do that before I um, dismantle my stuff and, and go out. But um, by now, to keep the timing, and I started 10 minutes late, so I need to 
rush through that. Um, I just want to point out some suggestions on where to go next. So if you got like question marks above your head about the stuff I talked today, how to go into that, the guy from over there that asked this question might be interested in these two great books. Um, short URL and, uh, below and QR codes coming up in a second. Um, Krista, Kaitila's book is like more about the low level aspect of molehill programming. Molehill is our uh, former code name for stage 3. <coughs> um, it's uh, about the Adobe Graphics Assembly uh, language or um, take, it, take it like that. If you want to build your first own 3D engine, that's the right book for you. So this is all about math and crazy stuff. Um, it's at 17 euro or so, and if you take that link, um, it will bring you over, the, over my Amazon partner store and I'll get one cent from it or something like that. <laughs> um, Thibaut Imbert, uh, who is our product manager for Flash, um, wrote that O'Reilly book, and it's an intro on Starling, the 2D acceleration, uh, 2D GPU acceleration framework. It's available at O'Reilly um, and it's free. So just check it, and uh, yeah, I promise QR codes, I'm talking all the way. Do you want a QR codes? This camera cannot read QR codes. <laughs> Whatever. And there's um, another thing. How many guys of you are coming from Hamburg, this beautiful city? OK, so at about half of you. Um, you might have heard about an event I'm uh, organizing in later this month in Hamburg, actually. So um, it's called The Future of Flex and Flash. As you guys know, uh, we really tried to max out uh, the downsides of corporate communications back in November, so uh, we have still a lot of stuff to explain. Your question's coming up next. And um, I'm talking there with my buddies Mike Chambers, um, Deepa Supermanium, and Lee Brimelow, who will give um, a special section on like more the coding and deep code aspects of what I talked about today. So if you want a good follow-up, um, capture that code and Go register yourself for that event. Your question. Thank you. Um, I'm actually interested in the announcement that has been made late in December uh, about the cooperation with the Unity engine. Uh -huh. um, could you explain about how this works and what's the roadmap for that? Um, the announcement was actually made by Unity, so you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> so I'm sorry, because um, I, I simply cannot comment on that. It's just, just business in, 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 um, uh, which is like, like under process or whatever. It's like uh, investigation under process. So I don't really have comments with that. So I know that Unity has a Flash exporter, and then you can do, do awesome stuff with that. So, but go ask Unity. Sorry. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, actually, I have two questions, and um, we've seen the Unreal Engine ported to uh, to the Flash, and, and uh, we just talked about Unity, and that they are doing the, the exporting to Flash, and what it enables us to is to to do real 3D games. But the problem in, on on Flash right now is that on Flash running inside the web browser, there is no possibility of using UDP for networking. So. Uh, is there any change? Uh, is there any chance ch chance to change that? And uh, the other question I have is about stage 3D. Is that actually it's using the subset of Direct 3D9, which is two versions behind. Mm -hmm. So it's good fit for mobile devices, but on the desktop we actually running pretty limited. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there any ch ch chance to change that too in the future? And I mean in the foreseeable future. I, d I, don't, I don't really got that UDP question. Actually, I don't see the point why you uh, wouldn't invoke like a like, 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 um, fast network protocol like that from within your application. It's a little bit like... The, there is the class datagram socket, which oh, okay. is limited oh, to okay. R. Okay, okay, now I get it. Um, good question. <laughs> can I, can I get, get back to you with that? Yeah. Uh, I'll just check with some colleagues if there's something on the roadmap. But the other question you answered with your question. It's about targeting multiple platforms. So, you know, I cannot be here and talk to you guys about consistency across all these platforms in the same way build up fragmentation, you know? Yes, but currently, even on, on, on the desktop, uh, most of people don't have stage 3D. Yeah. Uh, we checked that with our analytics, and actually, according to, to analytics of the website that I am running, it is like 30% of our users. Mm -hmm. What Adobe is saying is that 50% of users have stage 3D. Mm -hmm. So, 
we are already already fragmented and we, we already have to target mm -hmm. two That's versions. Right. And adding some extra effects like the more advanced lightning and shadows is not something hard to do if you have it, but uh, Adobe decided not to give it to, to, to the developers. Yeah. That's right. So I think, uh, again, um, it, it comes down to like covering as many platforms as possible. So that's one important aspect. And um, um, you are right with that. Whenever you put out something new, it takes some time so people can adopt to it. And um, also, like, uh, the technology can prove itself uh, and can get mature. So just be a little bit more patient and help us build up that stuff by using it and by producing great stuff, great stuff with it, um, the, many, the, the more people will adopt it. So that's okay. just it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay, then we're ahead of time. Three minutes. Good job. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay, let's thank the speaker.